today we're going to play with interference colors. This is a box I just received from Amazon and it comes with uh, six colors. Interference green, gold, blue, violet, red, and silver. Is that six? Or seven? Gosh darn it. I got my gloves on right now, so I'm not going to open the box, but I have put the interference mica into about an ounce and a half, two ounces per cup. I'm going to give it a quick mix. And let it sit for a minute. That's the thing about uh, insomnia. If it hits, I just get up and come into my workroom. I'm exhausted. We got a brand new pup. Belgian Melanois puppy. Run through the litter. We got a uh, really lucky because <laughs> it was practically given to us. And she has been keeping me up every night. I forgot how uh, raising a puppy can be. But with a dog like a Belgian Melanoir, they're very smart. And if you don't handle them well when they're young, you're gonna have a problem when they're older. Okay. After I mix these up, I'll pull out the color list. Although I'm mixing them up and they're in different cups, we're gonna do something called a dirty pour, where we're gonna take them all and combine them into one cup. And then we'll pour that straight into the mold. Now the thing is, I've got two of these molds, but, um, oh, I touched it. I don't know if you can see, I got mica on it. Anyway, I started these yesterday, and I poured black into the border channel, and let that dry. So I'll have a nice crisp black line when we release it from the mold. Okay. Now let's go back to the beginning. You want to scrape into the side walls of your cup to make sure that mica is mixed up. Mixing it up once and then going back and giving it another stir will help break up any clumps that you may have. You know, pouring the mica directly into the resin and then mixing it. And you have a greater risk of clumpy mica. I don't want that. That's definitely violet. So we got red, violet, silver, blue, 
gold and green. Yeah, I was right, okay. I hope that's what I said. Now the thing with interference colors is they don't really, they're not solid. And we've got a lot of colors here. And when you mix a lot of colors, you normally get like a brown, blendy, ugly color, but not with the interference. Here's what we're gonna do. Okay, I'm going to take this, which I originally mixed my resin in, and then I'm going to, well, let's just do it and I'll show you as we go. So, we're gonna do half of our product. Half of our product. Doesn't have to be exact. The idea is we're going to go back a second time and pour the rest in to make sure it's good it gets a nice natural blend for one of these oval trays it's 200 liters milliliters pardon me 200 milliliters of resin and since we're doing two i just doubled that so 400 which i think will be enough your cups you can use over and over and over remember that don't toss them I just set the, set it aside let that dry and it's ready to go next time same thing with your sticks don't throw them away use them the resin seals the wood so it's not going to cause bubbles for you like a lot of people are worried about at the end of my pour, I just wipe off the stick and put it on the plastic because it won't stick to my plastic. And uh, let it dry. And it's all set for your next time. Resin is not cheap, so you have to be thrifty. The dollar store is an excellent place to find items for crafting. I love the wood panels that uh, they sell for a few bucks. I turn those into wall art. Or I flip them upside down and use them as trays. Decorate them that way. I'll be doing a, a video on that coming up so make sure you subscribe and follow Okay, so we've got this, and you can't really see much. If I move it over here, you can see the light hit the different uh, colors, makes it look opal, and that's what we're after. And just to be sure, I'm gonna do something I've never done before. I'm going to add flakes in. should be enough. Now, let's give it a 
Okay. I want to mix it, but not blend it all together. It's going to do plenty of that on its own. Now, ready? Okay. Here we go. It's very easy to do this style. Very abalone shell. I cannot tell you how much I enjoy doing this, you guys. Okay, so here's something you should know. The um, chances of you burning a mold are pretty good if you zap it with a heat gun, I mean a torch. So what I do Pop the majority right away. Let it sit for a second. In a couple minutes, let more bubbles rise to the top, and then zap it with rubbing alcohol. This is a misting type water bottle for hairstylists instead of sprays of water it comes out in a fine mist which is awesome okay so i'm gonna go ahead and cover this up right now and clean everything up and tomorrow we'll pop it out and continue with the next step okay Okay, so it's the next morning, or next night, and, uh, they don't look like I was hoping. This interference mica is not reacting the same way as the Pearl X interference colors. Um, I think these are too subtle and I put way too much gold. Second note is I probably didn't need the flakes at all. But that's okay. It's not unattractive. I like it, but as I said, it's not the abalone type effect I wanted. Break the seal. Oh, I've got some cleanup to do, I can tell. Okay. a little bit better, better color. Hmm. Definitely not the effect I wanted. Eh. That's alright, that just means I have to make more. So you could see the interference colors showing up. I think it's because I did a dirty pour. I'm going to make another video 
right after these. And um, I'm going to show you what I used to do. All right, well, there's one. And you can tell this patterning is um, from the rapid temperature shift from warm in my room to me leaving the door open every single time. And it's very cold outside. And the resin is... Oh. Yeah, that it is pretty. It's definitely pretty. Can you see how it shifts colors a little bit in the light? Yeah, way too much gold. I think without that gold, it would be very prominent color shifting. But the other problem is, I once again filled them too much. There, see? But that's an easy fix. Maybe these smaller ones will work. We're not done with it with these. The longer you wait, the more difficult it's going to be to clean up. So, do your cleanup as soon as you pop them out of the molds. Otherwise, you're going to spend so much time playing fix it. Okay. I'm keep looking at the tray and I'm forgetting to keep it in uh, the camera angle. So, this is sharp and rough. So, nifty tool. Let me just Slide it across. You don't have to push it in. It'll catch on its own if there's anything to catch. Just making sure I get the major clumpies off because there's still one more step I do.
I have to concentrate because of my hand tremors. Doesn't mean I can't do it, just means I have to. Take it a little slower. Pull it very lightly. You don't have to push it into the piece. I'm not pushing in, I'm just gliding it across. Just kind of guiding it. Doing it long ways like this ensures that it's going to be smooth all the way across, even. I'm still at, uh, at an angle like that. shift. I just wish I didn't put that gold in there. Or those flakes. Not a problem. I 
There you go. It's the same thing with this. You don't push in. What I'm doing is you're putting it on it and pulling it. It's gonna scrape. Think of it as a, you know how when you accidentally touch something and you're like, oh crap, I barely touched it. Well, this is that. And if you're lucky, you get some ribbons. And that's just when you know your rough part is done. And it's nice and smooth and it's coming off in ribbons. You don't have to go fast, so you can go slow. I just some muscle memory from doing it before. Carefully, don't scratch your tray. And you don't want it to get away from you. sit there and file and file and file. Now if you had let it sit and harden for a week to where it's fully and completely cured, yeah you might end up uh, spending a happy chunk of change hammering away at it. There. So that. Now what I'm going to do is use my Cricut machine and put some embellishments on here. Let me go do that now. So I've got my pieces cut out. I'm going to turn these into playing card style trays instead of my original plan. Um, too much of the detail was being cut out. Um, a VA and I just decided on this let's make a long story short so I'm gonna put one to the side Hmm. 
Why is this not picking up? Gosh darn it, I'm gonna have to do it from the other side. see it. Oh, there it is. That's better. I'm going to center it. Putting it on the green mat to remove uh, the transfer because the mat is sticky. do the other one. I'm always so excited when it comes off first try. some air bubbles. I went ahead and uh, did all the weeding of the vinyl off screen because it's such a long process for me. so that I know they all fit in the same spot.
Hmm. Something doesn't seem right. I wonder why that happened. I think I put the wrong A's. Darn it. That's okay. I think I'm the only one who will notice. Normally I'd correct it, but I don't have any more black vinyl. So now I'm going to seal them. Those A's are going to bother me though. See the little swirlies? Actually, I'm okay with it. Um, now we're going to seal the image in with clear resin. And I'm going to mix that up and I'll be right back. Okay, we're back. and. I went ahead and mixed up some clear resin and all I'm going to do is fill these up and seal these in and then let it cure and we'll see what it looks like tomorrow.
so it's the next day and we have sealed them in like that very pretty I think what I'm gonna do is release a whole line of Aces High brand trays. Make my own line. And that's that. See you next time.